なるほど大臣の近辺にスパイがいるらしいから公安だけの極秘調査ということになったわけですかそりゃあ確かに穏便な話じゃないですねことを公にすれば大臣の政治生命も含め政変に発展する可能性は極めて高いでしょう犯人グループの目的がそこにあるならば有識事態に発展する可能性があります政府の劣等改造はまあいろいろ方々との衝突も多いらしいですからねどんなささやかなケチでも一つつけば野党勢力がドット票を伸ばす可能性もあると大臣がどのような要求を受けているのかは現在調査中ですですが脅迫の方法だけはほぼ分かっています何です大臣の孫の誘拐です周辺は否定していますが最後の目撃から見てすでに誘拐後72時間が経過していると思われます3日ですか波の身の代金目的ならもう決着してますね金銭でなく大臣に何らかの政治的なアクションを要求している可能性が極めて高いでしょうそれを我々は黙認するわけにはいきませんでそれの犯人グループとの可能性として鬼ヶ淵死守同盟がリストに上がったわけですねそうですうん大臣の孫を誘拐してダム計画の撤回を求めるかうんどうでしょう大石さんその可能性はあなたから見てあり得ると思いますか大石 seemed to ponder the idea for a while the section chief at the regional office had responded immediately with it's possible However, Oishi, who was this well informed about the matter, was hemming and hawing. Finally, just a little bit, he said something that was really just a little bit strange. Meiji Mai Made was this name. Kono Atari was Shinamiza Mura te Namai じゃなくて Oni ga Fuchi Mura te Yobare te ta so desu. <laughs> うちのばあさまの受け売りですがね。This topic was so completely and suddenly unrelated to the subject of the kidnapping of the minister's grandson that I was slightly taken aback. 鬼ヶ淵村。あ。それで、鬼ヶ淵主導名という名称になったわけですね。鬼ヶ淵村ってのはですね、人食い鬼の住む村だと言われてたんだそうです。今でも村人は自分の体に鬼の血が半分流れてると信じてます。え、人食い鬼。大石さん、それ何の話ですか。情報ですよ。さっきあなたからたくさんもらっちゃいましたからね。少しもらいすぎました。その分サービスしてあげてるんですよ。Oishi finally smiled, but it didn't seem like he was fooling around. Sakiwa Tsudo, Kitsuke, 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 Demoned away. It was the first time I'd heard such a peculiar phrase. However, it felt something. I felt something slightly ominous from this horrifying tale of demons abducting people in order to eat them. Hora, you could second in Pani Kami Kakshi, the no Arjanai deska. Stonga Arch to then, she so stay shimoto, so you the show. この辺りでは同じことがあると鬼隠しって呼ぶんですその昔話と本件にない,いえいえ直接的には何の関係もないただのおしゃべりですがねただケタンピケタン The car shook 
At some point, the gravel road had changed to a paved one. Tada. Nandes. Kono tochi ni onikakushi to yu na no shisso yukai o anji suru keyword ga aru. Toyu koto dake wa o hanashi shite oko to omoimashite. Gunkai no daijin no mago no yukai to kanke aru ka wa wakarimasen ga ne. Ma, fukai hanashi dewa nai ndesu. そんな言われの話があるということだけでもね。Oni Kikushi, human eating demons coming down to the foothills and abducting their prey. Then, in order to cancel the dam project that threatened to submerge the village they lived in, did they demon away the minister's grandson? Then had they already made an example out of the minister's grandson and eaten him alive? Just a little bit of 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 a Hinamizawa village was feared by the people in the area. I recalled that piece of information I heard from the prefectural public safety division. Nani shiro, kono hen wa inaka desu kara ne. Meishin nanka ga heiki de haba o kikasteru desu. Tokyo kara korareta Akasaka san ni wa chotto sozo mo tsukanai de shou ga ne. The man-eating demons is the price for clicking the right, the wrong button, for violating the sanctity of their village, kidnapped the minister's grandson, and swallowed him whole. That ludicrous idea flew through my head. It was so absurd. I was half disgusted with myself. Oishi was just teasing me. Stupid. It was all really so stupid. Come to think of it, by then, I may have already been seized by the curse of that dubious village. For me to realize that would take a little more time. So we're taking a more investigative approach than, uh, you know, more from the outside in. Than from inside out that we've taken before. Oh, these look like interesting tips. Land of the demons, nice, uh, nice disguise. All right, phone call with Yuki. So desu ka. Kyu na shuchou wa taihen desu ne. Douzo o kiyotsukete. 出張はどちらへですかもう出張先なんですか ?Whenever I headed out on an assignment, she would ask where.Not just Yuki, but anyone would have asked the same question.If it was a cold place, she would urge me to pack a thick jacket.If it was far, she'd warn me to be careful in the drive over.It was just normal everyday concern that led to asking such an obvious thing. I felt sad that I couldn't answer such a run of the mill question. <laughs> Yuki laughed as though she had realized something. At times like this, Yuki had the magical power to see right through me. Ah, 
君は昔からはぐらかさないはぐらかさない私にかまってもらえなくて寂しい寂しいってあなたが尻尾を振っている音が受話器を通しても聞こえてきますよ<笑> The sight of Yuki wasn't something you could guess existed from seeing her usual modest behavior and it was something that she didn't show to anyone else but me Normally, I'd poke her to hide my embarrassment and bring it into the conversation. But I couldn't do that over the phone. Of course, Yuki was clever. She was teasing me because of that. I'd called Yuki to keep her from feeling lonely when she was by herself in the hospital room. Of course, that was nothing more than a pretense that I, being shy, had come up with. It seemed that Yuki had long since seen through that act. <laughs> <laughs> For a while longer, Yuki kept teasing me without letting me in the call. Very important call. Record of opening remarks. Chairman. Members of the party. Congratulations are due, as we are celebrating 25 years since our founding. These past 25 years have seen much growth in Prefecture. The once quiet scenery with nothing but fields. Now has seen the opening of a new stop for the bullet train. And with the development of the highway, we've seen the rebirth of a modern city bursting with youthful energy. We reap the benefits of new business and industry. And with the special reverence the residents of Prefecture have for time honored traditions, history and culture, business and industry, with these ideals and harmony, they have accomplished in growing their city into one of Japan's foremost metropolises. Of course, the development of Prefecture couldn't have happened without the growth of the party. We are resolved to see every one of our campaign promises to fruition. Reaching our targets definitively and expediently, like arrows fired from a bow. With these arrows as the fundamental basis of the party, our members have sought to pierce the obstructions preventing the happiness of residents of Prefecture. But I do believe that everyone here is unlike an ordinary arrow. While being as unfaltering and straightforward, We've not neglected in seeking solutions that conform to the current day and age, while also keeping an eye on the future. An arrow, once loosed, can only fly to its destination. Everyone here, however, is no simple arrow. Even once loosed from the bow, without neglecting our studies, while employing new methods, in implementing more effective and flexible ideas, Thus, being able to change trajectories mid flight, we are magical arrows. The modern age marches ever forward. Sometimes it marches faster than the time taken from planning to execution. The following part was not in the script. It is thought to have been ad libbed by the minister. For example, there have been numerous problems with the Hinamizawa power plant project. Rather than forcing through the project solely because it was decided upon by the government, it is necessary to reflect on and adjust to the ever changing needs of the residents, the region, and the next generation. The protests by the local residents that surround the Hinamizawa Dam. These are also the will of the people of Prefecture. If you feel that there is no need to listen because the project has already been finalized, then you do nothing more than shed a poor light on Japan's post war democracy. The following is as per the script. For the lasting happiness of the citizens of Japan and the residents of Prefecture, please consider these policies thoroughly. 
I believe, however, that we have all gained something from the flexibility and foresight of the party. I've taken up much of your time. However, allow me to say the following to celebrate the 25th anniversary of our founding. Chairman, members of the party in attendance, thank you very much for today. From the opening remarks of the Party Prefectural Forum and 25th Anniversary Celebration. So, like, I didn't fully understand that. However, I think that little bit was something about not going forward with the damn project. Maybe? I'm not sure, though. Gears and fire and the taste of honey. What? All right, then. Spooky music box? Ooh. I think I like spooky music box. Anyone got the name of this song? That would be a good one to know. The world is filled with people blessed with relationships. Of course, that doesn't mean that everyone is connected to each other. It's obvious that on the other side of the planet, there are people laughing and crying who can't possibly have an effect on you. However, in the extremely limited community of the neighborhood, that sort of connection is just a matter of fact. It's quite possible that a single remarkable event could have massive consequences inside a small community. If you were to increase that in scale, a perfect stranger on the other side of the globe might become enough of a legend to have an effect on our lives. Well, it's not always that way. Like I said at the beginning, the links between people basically aren't that relevant in the grand scheme of things. Whether some household nearby is having steak, or... Mm, that's, that's a word I can never quite get right. Hold on. Croquette. Okay, so it is said like that. Or croquettes doesn't matter to me. When I put on my shoes, it doesn't matter to anyone whether I put the right one on first or the left. This much the average person can understand. But actually, in reality, this is the truth. The bonds between people are quite well defined. It's not just a matter of distance, of being far or near. For example, let's say that person A's actions have some effect on me. Even then, person B actions could have absolutely no consequence on my life. The reverse also holds true. Just because my actions affect person A, that doesn't always mean that they affect person B as well. Let's put it bluntly. If the bonds between people are like gears in a machine, the gear that represents me meshes with some people, but is isolated from others. There are some who would try arguing against this. Those people would bring up the example of gears in a clock. Each gear indeed only directly meshes with one or two others. However, if you rotate one gear, the one next to it is moved, which connects to the next one, and the next, in the end, all the gears are moving. There's a logic behind this, more than enough to convince the average person. Why is the argument convincing? The answer is simple. The relationships between people are ambiguous and can only be uh, described conceptually. How the gears are connected and how their movements are chained together can't be used as a fundamental explanation, so it throws a wet blanket on that argument. So for the people who like that explanation, I'll use the example of a clock again to refute it. First of all, to say that this world is a singular clock would be wrong. That is, there isn't only one clock. There exist many clocks in this world, each counting their own time. If you think about it, the idea that this world is just one big clock is the height of arrogance. Even if you use the analogy of gears to explain human relationships, then you should be able to explain it using an analogy of multiple clocks and related to a single gear. Neighbors A and B. A is a gear in the same clock as me. So it's best to remain civil. B is a gear in a different clock, so he doesn't really matter to me at all. 
That's the kind of clear distinction I'm talking about. You want to say I'm being fallacious? Fa 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 fallacious? Then let's change the analogy to something more familiar so you can understand. You probably heard the phrase, a fire on the opposite shore sometime in your life, no? For example, if your neighbor's house is on fire, you'd probably try and help put it out, wouldn't you? It'd be awful if the fire spread and burned down your own house, after all. But what if that fire was in a town on the opposite side of a river? Would you still go out of your way to help? You wouldn't, would you? Even though it would be the wrong thing to do, there's no way the fire could spread to your own house. Even if it turned into a huge conflagration, there's no relationship between the houses that will spread fire to yours and those that won't. With this basic example, you should be able to see the difference between gears that aren't or are or aren't related to your own. Having said that, there's still a lot to think about, even without a river to divide it. After all, it's not a spatial problem like being on the other side of the river, is it? Ooh, that was a lot. That, that was a lot. And I'm not exactly sure, like, what that was about, per se. Other than just, like, the... The vague idea that... You care about things close to you and not so much about things far away. The chick in the trunk. I'm sure that's not bad. The card stopped. But he didn't know any more than that. For not only was he blindfolded, but locked in the trunk of the car. How could people become this powerless just by being robbed of their sight? He absolutely wouldn't have known this without experiencing it firsthand. He soon realized it was pointless to try and undo his bonds, with the confines of the trunk quickly making him lightheaded. He had no choice but to let this mild torture dull his senses. That's why, when the car stopped, and the unpleasant vibration ceased as the engine was killed. He couldn't help but delude himself that he was being set free, even though nothing had been resolved in reality. Of course, he was soon removed from that delusion. He strained his ears when he heard one of the men who had abducted him, and an older man he was hearing for the first time strike up a conversation. <laughs> The trunk opened, letting in a blast of fresh, cool air. Even though up until now he'd just been thinking about getting out of that stuffy trunk, when it was actually opened, he suddenly became uneasy. Enough so that he wished that the lid of the trunk would once again close, separating himself from them. Suddenly, someone stroked his head. Of course, since he was blindfolded, he couldn't tell if the hand was petting him or simply evaluating how easy it would be to remove his scalp. Unable to tell the difference, he could only freeze as he imagined the worst-case scenario. <laughs> the older man said that kindly as he gently stroked the boy's head. Having heard nothing but the average standard dialect his whole life, the older man's distinct intonation left a deep impression on the boy. But he had no idea what he was saying. For your gramps to register as meaning your grandfather took a while to process. Eventually, the hand that was stroking his head loosened the blindfold. めかくしはまずいっすよ。年が割れると後々まずいです。ああ、そうかの。なんだ。せめて猿靴はくらい外したらんな。これぎゃ息もできんね。叫ばれたらまずいです。こいつのことは俺たちに任せてください。
そこんとこ肝に刻むんよ分かってます手荒な真似はしませんよ小僧がおとなしくしててくれる分にはね The man's head prodded roughly and repeatedly at the boy's head. Man's hand? Yeah. A rugged hand, unlike the affectionate one that had been stroking his head before. Just stay cooperative. If you struggle, there's no guarantee what will happen. That cliched threat was literally beaten into his head. Okay, so that one was clearly about the, the grandson. And the first one is clearly, you know, a phone call between the two. The record of opening remarks was, I think, said in some speech, although there were extra lines. I really don't, I don't quite understand that one. And then the gears and fire and taste of honey was about how things matter to you based on distance from you, both physically and, I guess, emotionally. I don't know. It was weird. Anyway, we'll stop there. I'm not quite sure what's going on yet. I mean, it, it seems like as a whole, we're sort of an outside looking in detective kind of thing. But I wonder how that's going to mesh with our story. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed though. And I'll see you next time for some more Higurashi. Bye.